Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Susan Lorenz and Ajike Owens? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Looking at a few of my recent pre-release videos on Patreon, we see enigmatic thumbnails like Valentine's Day laced with alcohol, desert murder mystery, and victims charged with murder. In addition, I have over 160 other videos available. My Patreon account can be found at patreon.com slash drgrande. The link is also in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the alleged crime, then offer my analysis. In 2023, 58-year-old Susan Louise Lorenz lived in an apartment in Ocala, Florida. She had worked as an insurance agent. One of her neighbors from across the street was a 35-year-old mother of four named Ajike Owens. She went by the name AJ. Since January 2021, the police have been called at least 10 times in relation to disputes between Susan and AJ. Many of the arguments appeared to be about AJ's children. Susan wasn't happy with them playing on a grass field next to her apartment. In February 2022, Susan alleged that AJ came to her apartment and confronted her about an argument that Susan had with AJ's children. AJ allegedly pulled a metal no trespassing sign out of the ground and threw it towards Susan. The sign struck Susan in her leg. AJ admitted to throwing the sign as she was leaving, but claimed that she did not throw it toward Susan. The police decided not to arrest anyone in that incident. On other occasions, Susan complained that AJ was on her property and accused her of opening her mailbox. Now moving to the timeline of the alleged crime. On Friday, June 2, 2023, Susan Lorenz called 911 at 8.54 p.m. to file a trespassing complaint against two of AJ's sons. Susan claimed that the children were playing on her property. She was on the phone with the operator until 8.59 p.m., so it was a five-minute call. Two minutes later, at 9.01 p.m., the police started receiving calls from people who heard a gunshot in the neighborhood. Susan called 911 for a second time, saying, quote, Some woman was screaming and yelling. She was trying to break down my door. I didn't know what to do. I grabbed my gun and I shot her, unquote. The police responded to Susan's apartment and found that AJ had been shot once. She was transported to the hospital and pronounced dead at 9.36 p.m. Here is what Susan told the police during an interview. Susan had been having issues with three of AJ's sons for two years due to their lack of respect for her peace and privacy. The children were always playing on a grass field outside her apartment. Susan told the boys that they were trespassing, but they allegedly threatened to kill her. To protect herself from the boy's mother, AJ, Susan purchased a Remington 380 semi-automatic pistol. I believe it was a Remington RM380. The affidavit said M380, but Remington doesn't have an M380. They only have an RM380. This purchase was made about a year before the shooting. On the night of Friday, June 2, Susan again complained about AJ's sons playing on the grass field near her apartment. This time she was complaining about two children, a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. Susan said that she threw a set of roller skates into the field and told one of the boys to go fetch them. She maintained that she did not throw the roller skates at any person. She just threw them in the yard because the children had left items near her apartment. The boys left to tell their mother, AJ, what happened. Susan claimed that AJ approached her apartment and banged on her door as hard as she could, but AJ did not try the door handle. As AJ was banging on the door, she yelled, quote, You don't talk to my sons. I'm going to blank kill you, unquote. This banging and yelling behavior went on for between two and five minutes. Fearing for her safety, Susan retrieved her Remington 380. She panicked and fired one round through her front door. When she fired the pistol, 
she was thinking, quote, go away, get out of the situation, just go away already, unquote. Susan claimed that she felt as though she was in mortal danger. The round from Susan's pistol struck A.J. and killed her. When this interview was over, the police talked to neighbors and witnesses. Here's what investigators learned. The owner of the property where Susan lived informed the police that the grass field next to Susan's apartment was a common area. Neighbors said that Susan was antagonistic and frequently harassed children in the area. She made false claims to the police against the children and used racial slurs. A daughter of a neighbor said that on the night of the shooting, Susan came out of her apartment and gave the children the middle finger. She then used offensive language, telling them to get away from her apartment. AJ's 10-year-old son told the police that he left an iPad behind and Susan took it. When he asked for it back, Susan threw it on the ground and yelled at him. She then threw roller skates at him and struck him in the foot. Susan denied this allegation. Again, she said that she threw the roller skates, but they did not strike any person. The 10-year-old went to get his older brother. The older brother then told Susan to throw something at him. Susan allegedly came outside with an umbrella and swung at both of the children in a threatening manner in an effort to get them off her lawn. The children informed AJ, who walked over to Susan's apartment and yelled, open the door, you heard me. As AJ yelled, she banged on the door. Her 10-year-old son was standing next to her when Susan fired one round through the door. AJ's 12-year-old son reported that his mother fell to the ground and said, call 911. Neighbors told the police that they never heard AJ make any threats about killing anyone when she was at Susan's front door. This, of course, differs from Susan's story, who claimed that AJ threatened to kill her. The police interviewed Susan for a second time. She admitted to using racial slurs and other derogatory terms. Susan had originally said that about 15 minutes passed between her ending the first 911 call and her shooting AJ, but in reality, only two minutes had passed. Susan told the police that she had a rocky relationship with AJ, but conceded that AJ never actually made any threats during prior confrontations. During the interview, Susan used words like reasonable and prudent. The police asked her about her word selections. Susan told them that she had researched information on self-defense on the same day as her second interview, so after the shooting. She also admitted to possibly researching self-defense laws in the recent past, including stand your ground laws. Susan said that she may have swung the umbrella at the children on the day of the shooting. The police examined Susan's cell phone. They found a video that she had recorded on the night of the shooting. It was of children playing outside her apartment. When the police attempted to arrest Susan, she told them, kill me, and refused to stand up. As she was being escorted to a patrol car, she claimed that she had chest pains and she tried to fall to the ground. Susan was charged with manslaughter with a firearm, culpable negligence, simple battery, and two counts of simple assault. Susan's landlord said that Susan was going to be evicted from her apartment, probably because of the shooting part. This eviction may not be a problem for Susan. She is eligible for up to 30 years of free prison housing if convicted of manslaughter. Now moving to my analysis. At the time making this video, Susan maintains the presumption of innocence. I imagine that she is going to stick with her self-defense story and argue that she is not guilty. Based on the evidence that is available right now, do I think that Susan is guilty of manslaughter? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Susan is guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. Susan discharged her pistol one time through the front door of her apartment and killed A.J. Owens. A.J. was not armed at the time of the shooting. The front door of Susan's apartment was closed and locked. This afforded Susan a reasonable degree of protection from an unarmed assailant. Susan had a long history of antagonistic behavior with her neighbors, including AJ's children. She appeared to be offended that children played in a common area and accused them of trespassing. Susan did not have an exclusive right 
to that grass field based on the terms of her lease. According to neighbors, Susan made false claims against the children. She would climb into her truck and blast the radio to irritate the children. She would also honk her horn. Just about everyone in the neighborhood had been involved in feuds with Susan. Neighbors said that she was thought of as the neighborhood Karen. Susan admitted to using racial slurs and derogatory language. On the night of the shooting, she allegedly offered a one-finger salute and used offensive language. Susan allegedly took an iPad belonging to one of the children, threw roller skates, and attacked the children with an umbrella. One could argue that these actions provoked AJ into a confrontation. Neighbors said that they did not hear AJ threaten to kill anyone when she was standing at Susan's front door. Susan admitted that AJ never threatened her in prior confrontations. The timeline Susan provided to the police doesn't add up. She claimed that there were 15 minutes between her first 911 call ending and the shooting, but it was more like two minutes. Susan may have recently familiarized herself with self-defense laws. Perhaps Susan provoked AJ with the intent of killing her. Moving to the exculpatory factors, Susan had no criminal record and legally owned the firearm. According to Susan, AJ threatened to kill her. Even though other witnesses did not hear any threat, they did hear AJ banging on the door and demanding that Susan open the door. Ostensibly, AJ was going to continue being confrontational if Susan opened the door and maybe even escalate to violence. It seems clear that AJ had not come by for a friendly visit. Susan called the police both before and after the shooting. She tried to get the police involved. It wasn't like she only called after discharging her weapon. Even though there was a locked door separating Susan and AJ, the banging on the door could be interpreted as creating imminent danger. Susan told the police that AJ banged on the door so hard, everything started shaking, and she thought the door was going to come off. Presumably, she meant come off the hinges. Susan thought to herself, she is really going to kill me this time. As far as the argument that Susan provoked a confrontation, a provocation is not something that can last forever. AJ had a reason to be upset based on the way Susan treated her children, but she had plenty of time to cool down. Susan was behind the locked door of her apartment. She did not represent any threat to AJ or AJ's children if they had all just stayed away and notified the police. AJ was looking for an unnecessary confrontation. She was the aggressor right up until the time the gun was discharged. Susan argued that she did not intend to hit AJ because she thought she hit really high when she discharged the weapon. Presumably, she meant that she aimed really high. The intent could be crucial in this case. Susan did not look outside her apartment before firing the gun because she recognized AJ's voice. She knew that AJ was standing there. The chances that a single bullet fired in this way would strike and kill the person on the other side of the door are not necessarily high, especially considering how quickly AJ received medical attention. The bullet would lose a lot of energy passing through the door, and a 380 is not a particularly powerful round to start with. It generates less muzzle energy than a 38 Special, which is a cartridge that has been largely abandoned by law enforcement due to low stopping power. It is possible that Susan was only trying to frighten AJ and was just extremely unlucky with the shot placement. When considering all the evidence that is available right now, do I think that Susan was guilty of manslaughter. Yes, I believe she was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. AJ had not crossed the threshold of the apartment and had no weapon. She was not a threat at the moment when Susan fired the pistol. I can certainly understand why Susan armed herself under those conditions, but it was not reasonable to use deadly force. Moving to the last question, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. I think that Susan was a neighborhood bully who was always looking for trouble. She did not want to be disturbed in any way and was tired of children playing near her apartment. On the day of the shooting, Susan provoked AJ, but did not intend on having a lethal confrontation. When AJ banged on the door demanding that Susan open it, Susan became angry 
and saw an opportunity to eliminate a longtime rival. Looking at her front door, she visualized where AJ would probably be standing on the other side and fired one shot through the door in a spot that would align with AJ's position. Now moving to my final thoughts. It would appear as though Susan's low frustration tolerance is going to lead to an extended prison vacation. She may find that her fellow inmates do not appreciate her commitment to a peaceful and noise-free environment. Susan may have thought that a noisy neighborhood was bad, but her apartment will seem like a tranquil countryside cabin compared to a prison cell. The good news for Susan is that prison officials share her enthusiasm against trespassing. Those are my thoughts in the case of Susan Lorenz and G.K. Owens. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.